Hey friends, it is Lisa, your friend, here for Ask a Flower Farmer. And look who's with us today. Look up here, Tuck. Tuck. We do have Tucker. <laughs> so Tucker's here with me at my feet, so maybe he won't um, cause a, a stir later on as he's been known to do. Welcome everybody. If this is your first time joining us, welcome aboard. This is where you can ask any question related to growing cut flowers, whether you are a flower farmer, a budding flower farmer, a home gardener. We talk about flower farming business and we even talk about farm dogs, y'all. So if you have a question that you'd like for me to attempt to answer, then post it in the bubble down below with the question mark. And as you can see, I am standing right here in our warehouse um, and I I strategically placed myself because I'm continuing to get lots of questions about flower conditioning, which I want to talk about again for just a brief second. Um, let me grab my notes. So, I um, want to first off say, you know, I just appreciate everybody reaching out and sending me messages and questions. It really, really helps me. And you can hear, Ron, for any of you that call here, that's Rhonda in the background helping somebody with their order. Um, oh, I have to say this. And so if you're watching this after the fact, today is May 11th, and we have a hot sale going on over on our website, but it is only good through midnight tonight. So after midnight tonight, it is not available, but you should go over there and check it off, check it out, because it is definitely worth your, if you need anything, now is the time to strike. Um, so I want to first remind everybody that I'm over on Clubhouse at one o'clock and today I'm talking about selling your flowers. A um, lot of sad stories going on right now of people that have got tons of flowers, but they haven't, they haven't built their customers yet. We're going to be talking about that over there. And if you're new to Clubhouse, it is just a phone app. You download it, join the club, then join my club, Flower Farming, and you'll find me over there at one o'clock and I do a little chat and then we do Q&As just like here. I would love to meet you over there, but be sure you follow me so you also will get notified whenever I go live over there. And I am so tickled to see so many sunflowers. Sorry, y'all, I'm adjusting my camera here. Um, sunflower emojis. Do y'all know what the sunflower emoji is all about? Those are folks that are, have taken any one, at least, of our online courses, and they attach that to themselves so that they're um, known to be one of our students, and we appreciate it so much. And if anybody here is one of Dave Dowling's students um, for his course, Bulbs, Perennials, Woodies, and more, if you're coming off of the spring wishing you had planted some of these gorgeous bulbs you um, you know see on social media or you planted them and it didn't go so well. Um, Dave's class registers in mid-June once a year, only once a year does it register and don't miss the opportunity. Um, it's $595 and guess what friends, you will save 10 times that amount um, from what you'll learn in that class. And I can say that hands down, we hear it from his students all the time avoiding mistakes buying the right varieties doing what needs to be done so all right we've got all that out of the way um so i just going to touch base again on flower conditioning because we're like knee deep in flowers now right um and so what i want to say first if you're a flower farmer let me pick up the bottle if you're a flower farmer in all of our harvest buckets goes the CVBN tablets. These are the chlorine tablets. This is what kills all the bacteria that's in the stems and bacteria that quickly grows in the water. Every little step that I tell you about, y'all, just buys you a little more time. And when you do the process, that buys longer vase life for your ultimate end customer. Um, that's one of the things we're most known for. So everybody, whether you're a home gardener or flower farmer, everybody should have CVBN tablets in their harvest container, which fills the stems with bacteria-free water and continues to prevent bacteria from developing in the water while they're sitting, waiting for whatever's gonna happen to them next, okay? So that's the CVBN. And did I say, we have a special sale going on right now, y'all. Great time to stock up on this stuff. 
So the next step for a flower farmer that is holding any flowers until they go to a commercial customer or we in fact put these in our commercial customers containers that we take to them um, is called holding solution. And they come in these, this is a little, this is just like a tea bag, just like a Lipton tea bag, meaning you just drop it in the water and the product seeps out slowly. This is basically flour food minus a lot of the food portion of it. You don't want your buds to continue open quickly while they're sitting with you or in a display bucket. Um, you want them to be healthy and nourished, but not that nourished, right? So um, holding solution is what flower farmers use to hold blooms. That means either going to your customers or if you have display buckets. I mean, if you're just taking flowers to the farmer's market tomorrow, you really don't need holding solution. You know, if it's just for a few hours. But if you have a farm stand or if you have a store where flowers are sitting in buckets, the holding solution is really, really beneficial. Um, so those are the two products that I use the most of on our farm. Now, if you are um, a home gardener um, or and or, I guess, flower farmers, we send home with all of our bouquets that are going to the end user, the little package of flower food, we rubber band it. If you're a home gardener and you are putting, whoever puts the flowers in the vase should have a pack of flower food. Um, and you'll find this over on our website too. So friends, flower conditioning is essential for home grown flowers. And why is that? It's because they drink more than retail flowers because they are, they haven't been damaged at all. They haven't gone dry through the process of being shipped. Um, so they drink a lot of water. Literally, you have to check your vase every two to three days because they'll suck them dry. Um, and when flowers are drinking like that, they really benefit from the from the products that we use. Um, it just makes them last longer. So that's the buzz of the day. I see I have some questions down there. Um, and so don't forget to join me on Clubhouse, friends, about selling flowers. All right, so Mary Golds and Bliss, any recommendations for the annual flowers during this 40 degree nights here in Virginia? Covered my marigolds this last past month, but some frost burn leaves. So I, you mean warm season tender annuals is what I think you're probably saying there. Um, so first off, um, our, my last frost date is mid-April and we typically wouldn't plant a warm season tender annual under normal with no protection out in the garden until at least 14 days plus past my first last frost date last spring frost date, right? So that for me would have been the 1st of May. And we did do that, in fact. But we also row covered, hooped and row covered, and they were planted into beds, into black film, the Bio 360. And in fact, tomorrow I'll be posting a reel showing me uncovering those beds this morning. Um, what you'll see in the reel is how they spend their nights with covers. And then during the day when it warms up during this time, I take them down. Um, and so definitely hoops and row covers are what's in order. And if you're dipping down to 40 degrees, a double row cover would um, give you about eight degrees of our weight of row cover um, would give you eight degrees. And that would typically be enough, hopefully to protect them if it didn't go below below 40 degrees. Um, and this weather is um, kind of crazy. It's always crazy, but it's getting crazier and more swings. And you just, you just have to be prepared. I mean, if you're a commercial grower, you have to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. So I need assistance with what to grow for Mother's Day. I'm struggling with this in 6B. So for Alan, um, I, you know, if 6B, and I'm assuming you're probably like me, that you're growing 100% outdoors, you don't have any hoop houses, um, you know, cool flowers are your ticket. And if you don't familiar with cool flowers, those are, is my book about cool season hardy annuals and 
what the concept is, how to figure out when the proper time for you to plant is. Um, and 6B is pushing it for Mother's Day, but you can certainly practice, do some things to help speed things along. Um, but cool, flat, cool Season Hardy Annuals is where you need to go. And over on my website, thegardenersworkshop.com, um, under the resources, under my blog and podcast, um, if you, there's a cool flower category, there's a post in there called the Cool Season Flower Chronicles, and that's just full of lots of tips, but that's where I would start. My calendula are in full bloom, but I'm not sure how best to harvest for long stem length. Do I cut at the base and strip and buds and leaves or cut where the branches to preserve buds? You never, ever, ever harvest to preserve buds. I'll say that again. You never, ever, ever make your choice where to make the cut to preserve buds. We always cut where we need to cut. And just because I cut calendula yesterday, I can really speak to this. I go all the way to the base of that stem and then all those leaves and stems, except for maybe a leaf at the very top, are removed. Um, and calendula historically for us does not have a super long vase life. It is short, um, but it's super useful. So that's why we continue to grow it. Yesterday I harvested cantaloupe, princess ivory, um, and green heart. Gorgeous. You'll be seeing pictures of the images of them soon. Totally beautiful. Um, and they, if you need to cut them deep and hard, and if they get good irrigation and it doesn't get too hot too fast, those stems will just get longer and longer. So don't ever, two things I don't ever do when I'm cutting flowers. I don't ever try to preserve buds. I cut where it needs to be cut to produce the next stem. And I never think, oh, I'm going to leave this flower because I I need it for next week. I mean, any flower that's ready to cut today, you need to cut. Because by the next cutting, it should be an old flower, right? Um, and I totally understand how people think to do that, but it backfires big time. So don't ever do that. Angela, can I mix and store natural Neptune's harvest and flower food? Um, no, no, and yes. So I wouldn't... Natural and Neptune's harvest, no, for sure not, because they will, um, I mean, natural is a living being, um, and it needs to get out of water and into your soil. Um, for those little critters, it's a larvicide um, to actually survive. Neptune's harvest will grow all kinds of rancid stinkiness if you let it sit. Um, and thirdly, for flower food, um, flower food, you can mix um, and sit on, but it definitely has a shelf life, not very long. So I don't recommend that. I mean, like a, one of those flower food packets, I think does two pints to a quart. It does a quart of water, I think. Um, and I would just, you know, yeah, you need to figure out. I mean, I would split the package. I would decrease the volume of product that you're mixing and figure out what that ratio is. Um, but I would never sit on mixed product. Oh, you're so welcome. I'm a home gardener and don't, ne don't need much at a time. Thanks for all you've taught me from your books, podcast, IG, and YouTube. Thank you so much. So if y'all understand what I'm saying, I'm saying, um, that instead of using, if you don't need a whole packet of flower food, measure it and divide it in half and figure out how much water that is. You know what I mean? And in natural, it's the very same thing. You know, just measure, use less and use a smaller volume of water. Lisa, is the garden hoe out of stock? It says insufficient stock, not out of stock. Yes, you have hit the nail on the head. I, it drives me crazy. Right, Rhonda, help remind me to ask Kelly about that. If it can say out of stock instead of insufficient, it's confusing. So, What's the story on the hose? The hose are have been en route from Switzerland for five weeks now. Literally, I mean, our fingers are crossed every day that the stand-up hose, and guess what? I am bringing back the colonial hoe, so we'll have both of them. They're both my favorites. Um, I mean, they do kind of do two different jobs in the garden. Both of those are in the way. We just got the hoe handles 
for the thousand hoes headed this way and those green trays and soil blockers. They're all, I have 14 pallets en route from Europe and your guess is as good as mine. We just hope every day that today is the day, but it's really been long enough that it could be showing up at any time. So yes. So if you want any of those items that are literally listed as insufficient stock, which means out of stock, you need to get on the wait list because what happens like the green trays, we could potentially sell out of them through the people on the wait list before they hit the public. So if there's something you want, you need to get on the wait list. Same thing is true for seeds, like eucalyptus silver drop. You know, get on the wait list so you get notified immediately. All right, what kind of beer did you say to use in your slug traps? According to Cornell University, where the college students tested this, leave it to them, right? Pabst Blue Ribbon is the beer type, and that's because it's got more yeast in it, and it's the yeastiness that attracts the slugs before they fall in and drown, unfortunately. Ha ha. All right. Teddy bear, at what morning temperature can I bring warm, loving annuals outside to be hardened off process? They're going, to, going in the sun under shade cloth, however. It's barely hitting 40. That is still too cold. Um, that'll definitely take out basil. It'll just chill and damage the rest of them. Um, when I have to play, to place them outside because I have to leave for work in the early morning, you know, you're singing my song. Um, this morning, I posted a reel on Instagram of me doing exactly what you're talking about. I had to come here to the warehouse, um, so I had to bring all my babies out, and it's really about, I mean, for us, it's got to be above 50, you know? I mean, in the sunshine and going to climb a little bit. Um, but I actually put them where they're blocked by the wind so the wind doesn't chill them. So over 50 at the lowest, you know, is what I would say. And I understand your pain. You could even, um, shade cloth, you could even lay row cover over that. You know what I mean? Just be sure the wind is blocked. Um, but basil is super sensitive to anything below 45 degrees. Denise, what flower seeds do you freeze before starting in soil blocks? Well, first off, none of the seeds that we sell or I talk about require special handling like that. We find it beneficial to store all of our cool season hardy annual seeds in the freezer. I mean, when we get them, we follow the process of dropping them in a container with a desiccant packet um, and leave it and closing the container and letting it sit on the counter for two hours before I put them in the, I'm sorry, for two days before I put them in the freezer. That allows the desiccant. The desiccant is what we get in um, our pills and stuff to help absorb any traces of moisture. So two days on the counter allows the desiccant to work, then you throw them in the freezer. Then when it comes time to start your cool season seeds, um, we take them out of the freezer and the same thing, leave them on the counter for two days before you open them. That allows them to defrost and for that desiccant to actually work. Um, and that's just the best case scenario because think if you were a cool season seed, it just helps you um, when you come out of the cold and you're getting warmer, it's just some of them seem to germinate a little quicker and a little better when that happens, but none of them require that. So we just store all of our cool season seeds in the freezer for that point. Gardens and such. Thank you so much, Lisa, for teaching us about early sunflowers. I had sunflowers for flat Mother's Day. Ah, oh, in fact, I missed Easter by only one week. I try to watch and listen to everything you do. Priceless instruction. Thank you so much. Um, and it's true. People all over are showing their sunflowers that they had for Mother's Day. Um, Easter would be the bomb diggity. And so once you do it successfully, then you can kind of like say, oh my gosh, maybe if I double covered and started this amount a week even earlier, maybe it would be worth it. Again, it's always a gamble, but for a flower farmer to have focal flowers for bouquets and for commercial customers during the high demand season, it is pretty daggum priceless, y'all. Um, and I just want to say, 
so much of what I teach and what you hear me and Dave talk about, um, this is just a sampling of what our online courses are about, y'all. I mean, to have it all in a cohesive, organized manner, we don't know what we don't know. And I mean, there's just so much stuff that can help kind of like feather your nest on the way to becoming a flower farmer. Um, and sunflowers are just a great example of how that all works, right? Did y'all see the peach sunflower that I posted on Instagram? I just, I posted it again today, the video. The color is really unique. Um, and there are some peachy hues, but it's like a buttercream color. It is just really, really beautiful. Morning, when the weather is still on the cooler side in the 50s and rainy, do you plant warm season annuals or do you keep them indoors, indoors until warm weather? So that is back to what those steps that we take. We plant in to the Black Bio 360, which is the biodegradable film that you'll see in my garden. It's, it's a, made out of a corn byproduct. We make our early beds with the black side up, so we get a smidgen of heat from the sun hitting those black beds, right? Then we use hoops and row covers. I mean, I'm gonna say it again, y'all. There's a sale that's only on for probably 12 more hours today um, to pick up some of these things that we didn't really know we needed. Um, so the gardenersworkshop.com is where, and everything's marked. You don't need a promotion code. It's not books, it's not courses, it's not gift certificates, and it is not good on previous purchases, y'all. I mean, how can we give you all sales if people reach out and say, I bought last week? <laughs> you know, I mean, that's just, I'm, I understand better than anybody, but this is kind of just a bonus. Um, so, planting our warm season tender annuals into cooler conditions, whether that means early or you just have cool conditions even now. I mean, it's May 11th. We're typically into hot days and nights and we're still cool. I am using the heck out of my hoops and row covers right now. Um, so we plant them, but we take special precautions, particularly for the night times. And the, as I said um, earlier, the reel I'll be plant, uh, planting, the reel I'll be posting tomorrow shows me this morning uncovering my warm season beds for the day um, to help give them some fresh air. I mean, our marigolds look awesome, as do our cosmos. Our zinnias were just planted, uh, not last week, I think, and our early celosia is coming right along, and that is only because they have been covered with hoops and row covers. Something is eating my vinca. What to do to kill whatever it is? Well, first off, you need to figure out what's eating your vinca. And we don't really kill stuff that in that manner, meaning we don't ever do, we don't ever use pesticides. You need to figure out what's eating it and figure out, you know, how to take care of that. Um, and so I can't really be of much help until you identify what it is that's eating it. Um, and you can reach out if you're a home gardener. Um, Vinca is a home gardening kind of um, item or you know flower to grow, um, is to take pictures or to reach out to your local extension office. That is our tax dollars at work, y'all. That's usually where your master gardeners are based out of. And they're often on hand to talk to you, to help you, tell you where to look, how to kind of super sleuth that, um, and to help you figure out what it is eating before you even think about how to take care of it. How do you keep lilacs longer once you cut them? They, they wilt after a day. So I wished I knew more about lilacs, but because I'm in the South, I'm in Southern Virginia, um, we can't grow lilacs here. Um, they, the, our heat and humidity just takes them. However, um, I will tell you that um, cutting them at the proper stage, which I cannot tell you what that is because I have literally never cut one, but it is typically the stage that they're cut in. Um, and I would search engine that harvesting lilac blooms for cut flowers. And I am positive something will come up that'll give you guidance for that. Um, the stage of harvest in any flower is the first step to success. If you cut a zinnia too soon, they're gonna wilt. 
you cut sunflowers too late, they drop their petals. I mean, it is all about timing. So that is super important step. How do you germinate baby's breath? Do you direct sow or soil block? So if you're talking about the baby's breath that um, I've been showing pictures of, which is actually not the baby's breath that most people are familiar with, which that is the baby's breath that you see that is dried is a perennial variety of baby's breath. The baby's breath that we grow is called an annual. It's a cool season hardy annual and it's called Covent. You'll find it on our website. Um, and it is a cool season hardy annual. So we fall plant it. Um, and I will tell you, you know, I'm doing all kinds of cool season hardy annual experiments on the farm. And I will tell you that the baby's breath, this same flower we're talking about that I fall planted, that's over 36 inches tall in our garden right now for harvesting. The very early spring planted of that same plant is blooming at 12 inches tall. Um, so it's just so apparent why timing of planting um, is so key. But to answer your question, I started in soil blocks um, last fall and it was planted out. I have heard from people that are actually in zone six. That is your winter hardiness zone. If you don't know your winter hardiness zone, go to a search engine, put in USDA winter hardiness zone um, with your zip code and it'll bring it up and tell you what your zone is. But if you're in winter hardiness zone six, seven, eight, or nine, um, you definitely fall plant. So what I'm saying to you is if you're in one of those zones, save your seed for the fall. Don't even bother. It is not going to perform um, in the heat of summer. So friends, um, I am going to answer t these last two questions because they're quickies um, from seeds flower truck what is the key to, to success to grow lavender can I direct so right now 99% of any of the lavenders that are really good for growing for cuts and dried lavender you have to start from a plant. So you have to take cuttings or splits. Um, I, again, don't grow lavender because it doesn't grow very well in the South. There's very specific varieties that grow in specific regions. So you need to do a search engine of what lavender grows best in and put wherever you are, your region, um, what state you're in, what region of that state, um, because it is very, very specific. Um, talk to people that have invested big money in lots of plants and then to come find out that does it won't take their conditions. Um, so we do would not, I don't know of anybody that starts lavender from seed that's growing commercially. Um, so I'm going to answer this one and then we're done, friends. Do, do any customers complain about the smell of dill when used as a filler? Surely there are people that are fragrance sensitive. I mean, I happen to be one of those people. But here's the way, the way that we handle any fragrant flower on our farm that we've handled all these years. First off, with your commercial customers, I mean, you can they know whether or not they want to use fragrant stuff. We had two big commercial customers, one of them loved fragrant stuff. Their customers love fragrant stuff. Then I had another big customer that had one customer chew his butt over fragrance so he would never touch a fragrant flower again. So you have to feel out your commercial customers. For our bouquet subscription service, our standard, a question we would ask our customers during their checkout to purchase a subscription was, do you appreciate fragrant flowers or should we leave them out? Um, so that is a question they would answer that would guide us on that. Um, of course, at farmer's markets or on our on-farm members-only market, people picked accordingly. Um, so that's how, so nobody ever got one that they didn't approve it before they got it. That's the answer to that question, right? Um, so friends, a couple things. Remember, the sale that's going on on our store right now at thegardenersworkshop.com expires May 11th at 12 midnight. It is not available beyond that. So please don't email us later if you watch this later. Um, you know, sales come and go, and this one will be gone as of midnight. Um, 
Join me over on Clubhouse at 1 p.m. Eastern time today. I'm talking about selling your flowers. Um, it's a chat for about 15 or 20 minutes, and then we do a live Q&A just like I do here, except at Clubhouse, you have the option to come up and talk to me. I would love to hear your voice, and I would love to meet you. Um, if you don't know about Clubhouse, just download the phone app, join Clubhouse, and then join my club, which is called Flower Farming, um, and I'll meet you over there at 1 o'clock today, and we are going to talk about some of the um, walls that people are hitting up against about not selling their flowers. That's what I should have actually named it is not selling your flowers. Um, to totally have been there. And so thanks so much. And I will see you next time. Head on over to thegardenersworkshop.com. We're ready for you. Ciao.